Hi, this is Chuck Benedict. I'm a mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon. This is part five in my series of uh, vision processing videos for um, FRC teams to try and make the process of vision processing simpler. And um, in this video, what I thought I would do, if you've watched the other four, uh, I haven't really talked a lot about the code behind the projects. I've mostly just talked more conceptually and then demonstrated running the projects in prior videos. But I thought I would take some time in this video to walk through some code, uh, kind of a tour of the camera vision class so you can see how it's constructed, which ultimately should lead you to the uh, path of modifying it for your own needs. So let's get into it. The uh, camera vision project is where the meat of all of the, uh, the processing goes on. And um, it uses the Gradle build system, which is the standard now for um, FIRST. And in particular, uh, there are some default constants that are up here at the top of this file that you should be aware of, because you probably will want to change them at some point. Um, <clears throat> these first two are probably not of interest, but this third one, that's your FRC team number. And the reason that that's important is because the um, the main app, this, this application will attempt to write uh, values into network tables. And if you do not specify a network table host, which is this next parameter, if you leave this parameter blank, then this program will attempt to find your robots RoboRio. And in order to do that, it needs to know what your team number is. Otherwise, the team number is not particularly important because you can override and specify a network table's host. In the case of the prior videos that we that I showed you, we were writing to a fake network table's host that existed on the development workstation that we were on, which is localhost, which is why this value says localhost. Uh, this final parameter. Uh, camera URL. That is the. This is the URL of the MJPEG stream that our two Python, or actually our, our Python applications um, that I created and I, I talked about. I haven't really gone through them in detail, but in prior videos I talked about some auxiliary applications that enable us to take a USB camera plugged into a Windows workstation and ultimately expose the output of that camera as an HTTP MJPEG server, like an IP camera. This is then the URL that this application, our image processing application, is going to use to actually um, look at the uh, images. The build script then takes this data and once you run the build, and I've already run the build, it creates a directory called build and inside that directory uh, there is a directory called scripts and if you if we open up the run camera vision dot bat file and again I, I ran this build for Windows target um, thus everything is named dot bat you'll see the Java command which is actually running the camera vision application and in particular see here's where team 997 gets plugged in Here's where localhost gets plugged in for the network tables host. And then our, here's, here's our camera URL. Now, you could change these manually if you wanted to. Um, I have them in the build just so that, um, you know, when you run the build, you know, from run to run, it will retain the values. If you were to change the values in this file and rerun the build, your values are going to get overwritten. Okay. Next thing is um, let's look at some source code. First, um, this pipeline, this uh, Java file is a pipeline that was code generated from uh, an application called Grip. And I'm not going to talk about Grip in this video. I may do another one. Um, but the if you looked at my prior videos, you'll you would have seen that um, this vision processing app is finding blue racquetballs and it's counting the number of racquetballs that it sees and it's drawing a yellow circle to identify the racquetball. This pipeline then was created using the GRIP application and GRIP is a um, it's a graphical application that has image processing 
primitives built into it that allow you to sort of drag and drop these primitives and hook them together. And what results that what can result then from that is source code. Thus, that's what this is written in Java, produced by the grip application. And it it was dropped into this project essentially unchanged. I made no changes to the class that grip produced for me. I just dropped it in here. Uh, I'm not going to really go through this a whole lot um, because it it's not really useful for the purpose of this video. However, the one thing that is useful, there is a, a variable called find blobs output. Uh, and it is type mat of key point. And what that means, it's a matrix of key points. And uh, essentially the result of finding the blobs, uh, which are the blue racquetball, finding blue racquetballs results in finding uh, a matrix of blobs. And so that is what this variable is right here. And if we get a function uh, down here somewhere, here it is, uh, find blobs output, that will get you that mat of key point value out so that you can do something interesting with it. Okay. So let's look at the next this next class. So um, instead of taking the pipeline class and adding some methods to it to interpret what we see in that blob variable I was just talking about, um, I created an, an interpreter class <clears throat> that accepts the um, the the pipeline and uh, gets the variable, the blob variable out of the pipeline and then makes the decision about um, what it finds in that blob. And the reason that I do that is it makes, it keeps me from having to alter the pipeline such that if I want to go back into grip and make changes and re-export it and re-drop it in here, I won't lose any of these interpreter changes. And secondly, it makes this in the interpretation class easily testable. And I'm going to make another video about automated tests that I've created um, for this project. And actually, I want to expand the number of automated tests because uh, a lot of our students don't really understand the value of automated testing. And uh, it, it's, it's a really powerful tool for essentially writing code once and then knowing that your code will always work properly. And so this interpreter class basically then accepts a pipeline and it exposes uh, two properties. It exposes a ball balls found property, a Boolean, and it exposes a ball count property, which counts the balls that it sees on the frame. Finally, main.java, this is where, this is sort of the console application wrapper, if you will, that uh, wraps up the calling of the pipeline, um, and it takes parameters off the command line um, so that you don't have to recompile the application when certain important parameters change. Um, and while on that subject, um, I used a class, uh, this class right here called jcommander, which is kind of nice in that it allows you to define decorators on um, properties of a class and see these parameter decorators. And those decorators I can define for the arguments that my command line accepts, what are the argument names? Uh, do they have certain attributes such as is the parameter required? Um, and is there a description that I can use to print in the usage of the command line application that will help the user understand what the parameter does? So I can define these things, these uh, uh, items on this parameter decorator and then when I instantiate jcommander uh, with a new builder, uh, what happens is I give the builder an object reference. And in this case, I'm giving the object reference of main. And what will happen, what, what jcommander will do under the covers is it will go look at my object um, because I have a, a static object called main here of class main. It will interrogate my class and it will look at every um, instance variable that's been decorated with parameter and it will take the arguments from the command line and it will apply any rules that it sees in the parameter uh, decorators and stuff the values from the command line directly into 
the instance variables on the class. Makes it really, really nice. Now, um, what I want to do and what I should do is I should, again, separation of concerns to make things easily testable. I should probably take these parameters and take the building of them from the command line and separate it out from my main application so that I can make my command parsing easily testable. Um, and I don't have any automated tests written for this yet, but if I were to do that, if I were to, to, to pull it out and put it in a separate class, that would then make the command line parsing part of this application much more easily testable. Okay, so uh, some of the command arguments that you can see here, we talked about them before, but uh, knowing what team number it is so that I know what network tables to write to, what network tables host to write to, Again, if it's blank, we're going to try to write to the over Rio. Um, we can also um, avoid writing out to network tables um, if we want to for some reason. I sort of built that feature in here. The camera URL of the images that we want to get uh, from, again, that's an HTTP JPEG stream. And then help will actually spit out all of these things on the command line for you if you call minus minus help on the command line. Next, so what happens when we actually run the application? Well, this run uh, method is called because in the main, uh, the main method uh, run is called right here after the command line is parsed. And a bunch of things happen. Uh, we load up OpenCV first because it's needed. We um, open up an input stream uh, of type mjpeg server. And um, uh, this, uh, this uh, server is server class is built into the WPI lib. And um, that stream is then going to be assigned down below here to an HTTP camera. Uh, and this is really nice because this allows, like, as I mentioned in prior videos, our USB camera to be treated as an HTTP camera, just like any other camera, such as an access camera. Most people don't have those, um, but this allows a USB camera to be treated like an access camera for the purposes of this application. Next, um, we set up our uh, image sync to be able to read from our camera so that we can uh, read the images one by one and take action on them. Um, we um, uh, sorry I lost my train of thought. Uh, next we um, open up a, um, a source because we're gonna write the raw images um, to two different network ports. Actually, we're going to write images to two different network ports. We're going to write raw images uh, to one port so that we can just know that this application is um, reading raw images correctly from our camera, from our HTTP uh, MJPEG camera. And then we're going to write to another port, which is our image process image. And so on a web browser, and I've demonstrated this before, this image processing app will show you through two network ports, the raw image and the image process image in a, in a web page. Next, um, as you can see here in this while loop, this while loop sort of infinitely runs. And what it's doing is it's going to the image sync created above. It grabs a frame. And then it calls our pipeline, which I talked about previously. And it calls the process method with the input image that was just obtained here. Um, next, if we are writing to network tables, um, we um, call the interpreter that I mentioned prior um, with uh, the value that we're going to write to network tables. And in this case, I'm only writing whether balls are found or not, but you could also write the count. This application is not doing it, but you could start writing more to network tables if you wanted to. And then finally, um, we do this draw key points. And what this does is this takes our raw image and it overlays on top of the raw image the yellow circles. So it takes all of the 
key points that are in the matrix, the uh, fine blobs output variable, if you will. It takes all of those key points and it um, takes the input image and it draws uh, rich, key, rich key points, which are basically circles, um, located at the key point location with the circumference uh, of the size of the blob found onto an output image. And then finally, this last function puts the frame of the output image to the image source, which is that um, variable we opened up above to the destination port uh, of the processed image stream. So I uh, hope this gives you some perspective on how this image processing application works. And um, uh, thanks for watching.